Hi guys, welcome back to Genetics Creations. My name is Jen, these are my creations, and this channel is me showing you all how to make them. Guys, today we are gonna be making this fantastic scarf. It is made very simply from a half double crochet, and I will put a link for that specific stitch if you are struggling to follow along down in the comments below. Uh, this is my first time working with one of these thicker, chunkier yarns, and I will say I love it, I love it. I know it took me forever to finally jump on the train, but what I love is that this worked out in probably about two days. I had this done and I only did it in the afternoon, so it's something that's very quick and easy hence why they call it thick and quick. I know. Um, but simple crochet going back and forth. Lovely texture, guys. I'm going to make sure you guys can see the texture that this all creates as you're going through it. I'll put the yarn right now so you can see which yarn I used. This was gifted to me, but if I recall, I think they got it at Walmart. So it is one that's easily accessible wherever you are at. Just look for a good sale. Otherwise, let's jump in. Let's get stitching. So this is a nice one, two, one, two, wash, rinse, repeat pattern. So you're going to start with a slip knot and depending on your yarn, you, you may want to chain more. You may want to chain less. I'm going to chain 22. So I've chained 22, this is gonna be the width of the cowl. And we're going to do a half double crochet in the second chain, I'm sorry, you're gonna skip two chains and you're gonna go into the third chain from hook. So half double crochet, if you don't know how, in the comments below I do have a tutorial for the half double crochet, but yarn over, insert the hook, you're gonna pull up one, pull up all three. Yarn over, insert hook, pull up one, pull up three. Keep going all the way to the end. All right, now we're gonna chain two and we're gonna turn. We're going to do this next row of half double crochets in the front loops only. So if you're looking at your work and you go into both loops, you'll see two separate loops right there. What we want to do is just grab that front loop only. So back it up, you're going to yarn over, grab the front loop, pull up one, pull up three, and you're going to keep going all the way across. Grab that last one on top of the chain. We're going to chain two and again we're going to turn. Now we're gonna do half double crochets, and this is, so that would be your first row in the sequence. This one's gonna be back loops only. So you're going to yarn over and go into that back loop only. As you can see, the more you alternate the rows, you're gonna get different textures throughout. So now we're gonna chain two and we're gonna turn. And guys, we're just gonna wash, rinse, repeat. So yarn over, half double crochet. We're going back to front loops only and all the way across. And again, chain two. And just to prove that I'm not overcomplicating anything and it really is you doing it right, we're gonna do the next row again together. And yep, 
you guessed it, back loops only. Half double crochet across. Guys, you're gonna keep adjusting, or I'm sorry, alternating the rows, back and forth, front loops only, back loops only. And you're gonna keep doing that until this gets as long as you would like. Some people may just do a short uh, cowl, and if that's the case, then you'll do a lot less and you'll use up less yarn, or you can keep going until you run out of yarn in hopes to get an infinity scarf effect, but you're gonna have that nice texture I will check back in with you guys to show you my progress as I get a little further along. Done a few more rows and I thought I'd just give you guys an up close look at the texture it creates. As you can see, you have every other row, you're gonna have that nice braided looking um, rib, if you will. It kind of gives it a ribbed look. This is your back side, still very pretty. Obviously not as fun, but it creates a different texture on that side. So keep going until you get your desired length and I'll see you closer to the end so I can, so I can show you how you join it. So I now have my scarf, and forgive me, I can't really zoom out right now, but it is long, and it is about 60 inches long. So I've gone back and forth till it's about 60 inches long. Remember, I am tall, so I like my scarves long. If you are shorter, you may wanna do slightly less. But now we are going to connect them together. So I've done my last row. I like to la land on a back stitch only. So wherever you're at, make sure your last row is a back stitch only. This is your right side. The side that doesn't have all of this ribbing, that is going to be your right side. The side that has more of this like bubbly looking row change, this is going to be your wrong side. And the reason that matters is kind of like sewing. We're going to put the right sides together. So the sides with all the ribbing, and the ribbing here, you wanna put those facing each other. And if you finish on the right side with back loops only, you should be on the right side of your work. And we're going to just uh, slip stitch them together. So I am going to go ahead and chain one. I did not chain two in turn before ending. I'm gonna chain one. I am gonna to try to keep it consistent with the pattern that we have, with the pattern that we have here. And I'm gonna go in front loops only on the first panel. And on the back panel, I'm just gonna grab whatever hooks are remaining from my chain. And we're just gonna slip stitch. So I'm gonna insert into the front loop only in here. And then I am going to pull through all of the loops on the hook. Front loop, remaining one on the chain. Make sure I'm grabbing just one and not both, otherwise it just is a sliding hole. Pull it through, all the loops on hook. You're gonna wanna do this all the way to the end, and then we will fasten off. When you've gotten to that last one, we're going to cut our ends with hopefully better scissors than what I have. And you're just gonna pull it through and pull it tight. That way, when you flip it open, you will see that you guys have it joined and it is now one thing across. Now, what I'm gonna do is, to help clean up what it looks like these seams, when I weave these ends in, I will often tighten this up and I'll just do like another slip stitch right here just to make that more even before I weave my ends in so you can't see. And you're all set. 
All right, guys, we made it through another tutorial and congratulations on another project. I hope you guys are loving it. It definitely is a great piece. I love the way these ones, the colors blended and switched, but try it up with some solid colors and whatnot. It can be worn like this as a cowl, or you can wear it long if you are like me and you prefer the longer look. Great news, you can make it, make it wider and thicker if that's something that you want by just increasing the number of stitches going across. But the good news is I was able to do this in one skein. So it's nice knowing that you can just buy one skein, work a project in a weekend and be completely done. Guys, I have more tutorials coming soon. So please, if you have any questions, as always, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. I do reply to everybody who comments on my channel and let me know if you're subscribing. I'd love to know who I'm reaching out there. I've got more tutorials coming soon. I'm super excited. Please subscribe, stay tuned, and let's keep stitching.